Welcome to Read This Next with Laura and Nicole from the Thunder Bay Public Library. This week we are bringing you books that are in translation. Yeah, so we've um, tried to get a wide variety of books that are from um, translated by authors who live around the world. So there's uh, hopefully some titles that you haven't heard of before that we will suggest for you today. Mm-hmm. I think I'm the first one. So uh, I like the cover of it just to start. I like it. It's called The Eight Life, uh, Eighth Life by mm-hmm. Nino Haratishwili and the translator is Charlotte Collins and then it also lists Ruth Martin as the other translator perhaps they did it together cool love that and this is a story from Georgia not the state the country so here's the description an international phenomenon the unput downable story of seven women living through the greatest drama of the 20th century 1900 Georgia In the deep south of the Russian Empire, Stasia, the daughter of a famous chocolatier, dreams of ballet in Paris, but marries a soldier and finds herself caught up in the October Revolution. Escaping with her children, she finds shelter in her unworldly sister, Christine, whose beauty, fatally, has caught the eye of Stalin's henchmen. Disastrous consequences ensue for the whole family. 2006, Germany. After the fall of the Iron Curtain, Georgia is shaken by civil war. Nisa, Stasia's brilliant great-granddaughter, has broken from her family and moved to Berlin. But when her 12-year-old niece, Brilka, runs away, Nisa must track her down and tell her the truth about her family and about the secret recipe for hot chocolate, which has given both salvation and misfortune over six generations. Truly epic and utterly absorbing, The Eighth Life is a novel of seven exceptional lives lived under the heat and light of empire, revolution, war, repression, and liberation. It is the story of the century. I had like a moment where I forgot the part in the beginning where like the chocolatier and I was like, a (laughs) recipe for hot chocolate, that's so random. But then I remembered and it all makes sense. Yeah, great grandpa was a chocolatier. (laughs) <laughs> great yeah. great 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 yeah it sounds really good and interesting and I feel like um you know there's a lot of family saga books out there um but this is a family saga set in a country that perhaps you haven't even thought about much before yeah so I think if you like that sort of um expansive history of a family this might be a really fascinating one to pick up for sure mm-hmm. So our next title is called The Memory Police. It's by Yoko Gawas, translated by Stephen Snyder. And this author is Japanese and sounds um, really, really interesting. So here's the description. A haunting Orwellian novel about the terrors of state surveillance um, from the acclaimed author of The Housekeeper and The Professor. So here's what's happening in the story. On an unnamed island, off an unnamed coast, objects are disappearing. First hats, then ribbons, birds, roses, until things become much more serious. Most of the island's inhabitants are oblivious to these changes, while those few imbued with the power to recall the lost objects live in fear of the draconian memory police who are committed to ensuring that what has disappeared remains forgotten. When a young woman who was struggling to maintain her career as a novelist discovers that her editor is in danger from the memory police, she concocts a plan to hide him beneath her floorboards. As fear and loss close in around them, they cling to her writing as the last way of preserving the past. A surreal, provocative fable about the power of memory and the trauma of loss, the memory police is a stunning new work from one of the most exciting contemporary authors writing in any language. Interesting. Isn't it? Yeah. And I, I like the cover too. Like it. Yes. Yeah. It's the, the having language to name things. It's such an interesting thing to explore because we've actually, we talked about this interestingly in a very different way in our recent episode on memoirs, we were talking about the book in the dream house. And one of the things is it's a, it's a memoir about abuse. And one of the reasons that the, author who's experiencing the abuse has such a difficulty coming to terms with it is because there's not really language for it. Mm -hmm. It makes it, that makes it so much harder for her to realize and acknowledge what's happening. And it is so important being able to name things and that 
imbued meeting. And anyway, I just think this sounds great. It does. It mm-hmm. sounds amazing. Yeah. Oh, this list is full of good books. <laughs> I know. And you know what is interesting is it also reminds me of a book that's very similar, only instead of names of things that are disappearing, letters are disappearing on an island. Yeah. You have, okay, well, that's a great book. It's called yeah. LMNOP. And that is another one that you can check out. That's very good. Mm-hmm. That one, uh-huh. yeah, that's a really good book. <laughs> a good book it's a lot of fun yeah so elemento elemino p not we'll put it in the show notes yeah sure <laughs> there you go um our next one is celestial bodies by joka alharthi uh the il- not illustrator translator is marilyn booth um and the author is from oman near the persian gulf uh love the cover I just like colorful covers all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, here is the description. In the village of Al-Awafi in Oman, we encounter three sisters. Maya, who marries after a heartbreak. Asma, who marries from a sense of duty. And Kuala, who chooses to refuse all offers and await a reunion with a man she loves, who has immigrated to emigrated sorry to Canada these three women and their families their losses and loves unspool beautifully against the backdrop of rapidly changing Oman a country evolving from a traditional slave owning society into its complex present through the sisters we glimpse a society in all its degree degrees from the very poorest of the local slave families to those making money through the advent of new wealth another family story another family story um, another family story and another one that looks at relationships with the, between sisters, which I always think is very interesting. <laughs> yeah. So another one that if you, if you like those family sagas, you can check out celestial bodies. You know, what's funny is I hadn't read the description of that one. And I was like, is this science fiction? <laughs> <laughs> no. Just based on the title <laughs> celestial bodies, it kind of suggests maybe it is, but then you're like, Honestly, mm. even the cover a little bit, I was like, are those sciencey lines? No, yeah. they're not. <laughs> I wonder how that comes into play, though. Something about stars and falling stars, maybe. Who knows? Just guessing. Who can say for sure? So our next title is called Tender is the Flesh. It's by Augustina Basterica. It's translated by Sarah Moses. And this is um, an Argentine novelist. And what do you know, it's another um, future, sort of near future, um, sort of dystopia, similar to the memory police um, in that way, but in what's actually happening in the book, very different. So here's um, the flesh we're talking about in Tender is the Flesh. Um, Working at the local processing plant, Marcos is in the business of slaughtering humans, though no one calls them that anymore. (laughs) His wife has left him. His father is sinking into dementia, and Marcos tries not to think too hard about how he makes a living. After all, it happened so quickly. First, it was reported that an infectious virus had made all animal meat poisonous to humans. Then governments initiated the transition. Now eating human meat, special meat, is legal. Marcos tries to stick to numbers, consignments, and processing. Then one day he's given a gift, a live specimen of the finest quality, Though he's aware that any form of personal contact is forbidden on pain of death, little by little, he starts to treat her like a human being. And soon he becomes tortured by what has been lost and what might still be saved. Very interesting. It sounds terrible. (laughs) Sure. But very, very cool look at uh, probably what makes us human. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's not eating other humans. That's not it. Something how, else. How are they, how are they different? I don't know. Special meat. I have not read it, so I cannot say for sure. I was thinking about the title a little bit and wondering if it was like, if it's an allusion to um, Fitzgerald's Tender is the Night. Could right? be. Yeah. I was like, it's, it's too similar to, to not be. Um, which is a book about, you know, kind of doomed romance in the jazz age, right? So like, maybe this is like doomed romance in the age of cannibals. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, another very interesting title. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and interesting cover because I think it's the human mm-hmm. head with a bull head as the top piece, like yes. nails up. Yes. Hmm. Very mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. On a lighter note, we'll throw us to a YA novel. Yes. Uh, the Forgotten Book by Mechfield Glasser. Uh, I feel like- yeah. Yes. Feels mm-hmm. like a good, I feel like I said that okay. <laughs> It is, it's German. So it sounds sort of German the way yeah. you said it. Yeah. And the translator was Romy Fursland. I don't remember if I said the title. It's the forgotten book. <laughs> um, okay, here's the description. A Jane Austen ex- inspired YA tale about a 16 year old girl who finds a magical book and discovers that anything she writes inside becomes true. Emma is used to things going her way. I, her father is headmaster of her prestigious boarding school. Her friends take her advice as gospel, and she's convinced that a relationship with her longtime crush is on the horizon. As it turns out, Emma hasn't seen anything yet. When she finds an old book in an abandoned library, things really start going Emma's way. Anything she writes in the book comes true. But the power of the book is not without consequences, and Emma soon realizes she isn't the only one who knows about it. Someone is determined to take it from her and they'll stop at nothing to succeed. A new boy in school, the arrogant, aloof, irritatingly handsome (laughs) Darcy de Winter becomes Emma's unlikely ally as secrets are revealed and danger creeps ever closer. Yeah, very, yes, very, um, obviously, you know, Jane Austen um, also kind (laughs) of, Sounds very classic romance, fun little mystery. Yeah, good stuff going on there. It's got um, a library I, in it. It's got a library <laughs> in it. It's about books, books about books. Yeah, that's the best. That's yeah. the best. and the cover is really pretty. Um, it really is. Yeah, for those of you who can't see it, it's a girl standing on top of an open. Well, I guess sitting on top of an open book that has trees coming out of it, and it's a book stacked on top of other books. It's very, very uh, whimsical. I like it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like she's going into the book mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay so next one is a novel um, by a polish author this is a novel called flights by olga Torkazak, translated by jennifer croft okay so from the incomparably original apparently, writer, um, flights interweaves reflections on travel with an in-depth exploration of the human body, broaching life, death, motion, and migration. Chopin's heart is carried back to Warsaw in secret by his adoring sister. A woman must return to her native Poland in order to poison her, tor- <laughs> sorry, poison her terminally ill high school sweetheart. We've oh. all been there. We've all been there. Sometimes <laughs> you have an errand, you have to go home. Um, and the young man slowly descends into madness when his wife and child mysteriously vanish during a vacation and just to suddenly reappear. Does sound unsettling. Yes. Through these brilliantly imagined characters and stories interwoven with haunting, playful and revelatory meditations, Flights explores what it means to be a traveler, a wanderer, a body in motion, not only through space, but through time. Where are you from? Where are you coming in from? Where are you going? We call to the traveler enchanting unsettling and wholly original flights is a master storyteller's answer wow Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i i'm still stuck on the in order (laughs) i mean i'm assuming that's like because he uh wants it but yeah this is an assist an assisted suicide to an old friend yeah but strange i'm uh well the whole thing is um is supposed to be experimental and unusual mm-hmm. um enchanting unsettling i'm like okay i'm there you got Tell me it more. <laughs> description nailed that <laughs> enchanting and unsettling yes definitely yeah that yeah. sounds really uh not up my alley but it sounds really cool like it's um very contemporary but yeah i don't know i want to say it's contemporary mixed in with like a little bit of fantasy but at the same time i doesn't sound that way either post modern post post um, post modern that's the word mm-hmm. there we go that's the word yeah yeah i think it's interesting because quite a few of these books that are in translation 
um, are actually like very literary titles, lots of award winners in here. And in part, that's because like not all books get translated, obviously, right? So it's only ones that they feel like are going to sell. So often that's because the author has name recognition because they've won awards or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it means that like, despite some of these books sounding really genre-y, like, like it's a cannibalism book. It's, <laughs> it's also, it's a very literary title. Like it's not um, what you would think of as a cannibalism book normally. Mm -hmm. So I hope if you've been listening, sticking with us um, and you, you enjoy, um, you know, more literally literary in-depth titles that some of these are, are catching your fancy. Mm -hmm. I think we have one more Yes. One more general rec. Yes. Yeah. Um, the, I, I'm just going to ask you how it's pronounced first. Kim oh, Ji Young. Sounds about right. Okay. Uh, the next title is Kim Ji Young born 1982 by Cho Nam Ju and Jamie Chang is a translator. Covers cool again. Reminds me of that man with the apple in front of his face. I don't right. remember who made that. Anyways, description. A fierce international bestseller that launched Korea's new feminist movement. The author is Korean. Uh, Kim Ji Young, born 1982, follows one woman's psychic deterioration in the face of rigid misogyny. And then, We've all been there. Yes. That's not even a joke. No. 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 We've been there. <laughs> not um, even a joke. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. More info. Kim Ji Young is the most common name for Korean women born in the 1980s. Kim Ji Young is representative of her generation. At home, she is unfavored. She is an unfavored sister to her princeling little brother. In primary school, she is a girl who has to line up behind the boys at lunchtime. In high school, she is a daughter whose father blames her for being harassed late at night. In university, she is a good student who doesn't get put forward for internships by her professor. In the office, she is an exemplary performer. Uh, exemplary employee who is overlooked for promotions by her manager. At home, she is a wife who has given up her career to take care of her husband and her baby. Kim ji -young is depressed. Kim ji -young has started acting out. Kim ji -young is her own woman. Kim ji -young is insane. Kim ji -young is sent by her husband to a psychiatrist. This is his clinical assessment of the every woman in contemporary Korea. Love that description. Right? Very good. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Sounds, sounds so, um, oh, oh, what's the word? It sounds so applicable in this country as, yep. uh, as in Korea and in many other countries around the world. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And, uh, I like the, I think the, the last sentence, the, this is clinical assessment of the every woman kind of explains the cover a bit. Like she doesn't have a face because she's everyone. Mm -hmm. so let's, uh, let's move on to our recs then. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? Um, you just finished that one. So I will go first. Okie doke. Okay. So my first or my rec is a title called Little Eyes. I'm going to come out and say it. I don't like the cover. There was two covers. There was one that had panda bears on the front. My opinion. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, I didn't see that one. Okay. That one's probably better. I'll insert it. I don't think it was much better. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. So neither cover is great. That's disappointing. The book is very good. Um. Yeah, so the, the book is called Little Eyes. It's by um, Samantha Schweblin, translated by Megan McDowell. Um, this is an author who was originally from Buenos Aires and she lives in Berlin. And uh, I read this one recently. It was intense. So good. So good. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to just, um, I'm not going to read the description. I'm just going to kind of describe it. So it's basically a story, again, like near future very near future we might already have the technology for this I don't know where <laughs> someone's invented these little toys can can tukis and they the way they're described they sound like a little bit like more um personalized uh what were those little those little things that talk to you no furbies, furbies. Mm. sounds a little bit like furbies only they're a little bit bigger um they're little stuffed animals that have cameras for eyes wheels for feet and they can usually make a couple of sounds, but you can't, they don't talk or anything like that. 
And how it works is you sign up either to be an owner where you take this creature home or you can sign up to be the creature where you buy basically, I guess, like a license and you go and, you know, type in your numbers and then it connects you to a Kentucky that is in someone else's home. Okay. I don't like okay. that. <laughs> no, but so, so now you have one of these cute little stuffed animals and you have no idea who is watching you through the camera eyes, basically. Right. Do you have to get one of the things? No. Nope. Like- People choose to because okay. people are weird. I do think people probably would. Some people oh, yeah. probably would get this. Yeah. Yes, they would. Yes, they would. And form like weird little relationships with them. And it, the novel kind of goes from when they are, they first come out and like just a few people have them. And then like kind of by the end of the novel, they're pretty widespread, like tons of people have them and how it changes it changes society in like weird ways. Hmm. Uh, Yeah. So you can either like be a voyeur or an exhibitionist in a way, a little bit, because you've invited (laughs) someone into your home. Um, Yeah. So it, 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 the story jumps around between different people and how their lives are impacted by these. So there's um, one who there's, there's one man who, or young man who realizes basically that like, if you sign up for one and then it turns out that you're owned by like, I don't know, a four-year-old in North America and basically all you do is sit in their bedroom all day, then that would be boring and you don't want that. So he buys a bunch of subscriptions and then finds like interesting ones and sells those for more money. They're like, oh, well, this one is owned by a rich family in Brazil and they have house parties all the time or whatever. Whoa. Right. So there's this, that character and his, what's going on with him. And then there's um, like a lonely old woman who she is a, she's a watcher. So um, she becomes more and more invested in the life of the person who owns the toy. Um, Yeah. And just, other experiences people have um and it's around like it's it's international right so you've got characters from living in different places in the world and inevitably inevitably some of the stories are kind of sweet you know the way that people are making connections Mm -hmm. and some of them are um horrifying the way that people are making connections as you would expect as you would expect and one of the things that I wouldn't have necessarily thought of, but what happens through the book is if people do build a connection with their, their Kentucky, then they figure out a way to communicate. And in some cases, like leave their spouse and go, you know, get with the person who was living in their home. It start like, it has an impact on their real life or like, yeah. oh, you should know so-and-so, you know, I was, I'm your Kentucky and I was watching and a friend of yours stole money out of your wallet or whatever, like different ways, because, because you're, you you just forget it's there. Right. So they know everything about you. So it's easy to find somebody. If you want to, you've heard their name, you know, where they live, all this stuff. It's just a really interesting thing. Look at like privacy Mm -hmm. and how people build relationships. Um, There's a couple heroic moments. Nice. It sounds very loosely um, black mirror esque. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Same kind of issues cropping up there. Mm-hmm. I will give a trigger warning in this one for, um, for um, human trafficking. Okay. So if that's something that you prefer uh, to avoid, um, human trafficking and um, kind of cruelty to children. Okay. Then, you know, skip that skip the book or skip those sections of the book. Cause like I said, it's not all interconnected. It's kind of just going through dropping in on different stories. Um, but overall very interesting. I really enjoyed it. All right. Um, I will move on to my rec then. Mm-hmm. I am not sure how to pronounce her last name. I have heard it's pronounced funky. It's pronounced funk. It's, I pronounce it funk. It's got, it's Cornelia funk with an E on the end of funk. Um, And I'm specifically recommending Inkheart, but all of her stuff is really good. Um, So Inkheart is a trilogy. Have you read this one? 
I have not. <gasps> this was You're a little bit out. after my time. Sure. I think like, it came, I don't remember when it came out actually. Um, in cart. Let's see. Like I wasn't, I was a little older when this book, because it is like technically juvenile when it yeah. came out and I just never went back to it. Yeah, it's 2003. So, and I think I read it when it came out actually as a little grade four or grade grade five i think i was reading it whereas i was an ancient soul in university stop it um okay yeah so inkart she's also written uh thief lord and dragon rider and a whole bunch of other stuff um okay this is the description one cruel night maggie's father reads aloud from a book called inkart and an evil ruler escapes the boundaries of fiction and lands in their living room Suddenly, Maggie is smack, smack in the middle of the kind of adventure she has only read about in books. Maggie must learn to harness the magic that has conjured this nightmare, for only she can change the course of the story that has changed her life forever. This is Inkheart, a timeless tale about books, about imagination, about life. Dare to read it out loud. So the basic idea is this girl named Maggie and, well, her, her dad has this power that when he reads books, the things in them come to life. So he one night reads a story out loud to her and mistakenly uses his power and releases this bad guy into the world. Another oops. Come yeah, on. Another Come on, oops. dad. <laughs> yeah, he knows better. Get it together. <laughs> yeah. So they, they, they end up going into the book and it expands three books it's so good um the movie was trash uh mm, so don't watch it happens it broke my heart um <laughs> but it's 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 very very well done and it's got a lot of different elements from different kind of books and uh it's a bit of it's a bit thicker than you would expect from technically a juvenile chapter book. stopper yeah it's yeah and then they just keep getting bigger. Chunky. I'm looking at my copies. They get like thicker <laughs> as they go on. But um, yeah, it's uh, probably one of my favorite books that I've I've read when I was a kid. Like 10 out of 10, all my friends read wow. it. Wow. Yeah. It's high praise. Yeah. I literally took my copy and was like, you need to read this, guys. And they're like, okay. And then we all read it and it was great. <laughs> oh, forcing yeah. a little book club with your friends. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, when, then we went and saw the movie when it came out, and we were like, mm. Mm. main mm-hmm. character is not supposed to be blonde. <laughs> it was something like that. And we're just like, no. That's with Brendan <laughs> Fraser, though. He was. Yes, I remember he was in it. Yeah, yeah. They had yeah. good intentions. But, yeah. Sure. Uh, that is that is Inkheart. Read it. It's really good. It's very touching. I liked it. I liked it a lot. <laughs> and um yeah that's the summary of our episode do we have anything else to add i don't think so just okay. if, if you know as always if you have suggestions of topics you'd like us to cover then we are always um open willing to hear mm-hmm. and uh you can send us information like follow subscribe to at tbpl across the board uh you can get our show notes www.tbplofftheshelf.com um you can find us on most podcast platforms make a comment rate and subscribe to us so that we can uh, get other people watching the show and that's it we'll see you next week <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs>